Hey everybody, Jennifer with Scrapping Under the Influence. I am back with two projects, same project, two different papers. That's what I meant to say. Same book, two different papers. I have used the Country Bunny and the Forever Ireland to make a fun little folio. It goes together really, really quickly. Um, so let's take a look. I'm going to move my Ireland one for a minute. So for the Country Bunny, I have triple matted the front cover with some of the matching solids that Tammy has put together with the uh, paper collection. Country Bunny is exclusive to Country Craft Creations. I have double matted on my spines and then just a single mat on the back. I'm not sure what was on my thing here. Anyway, so I've got some Prima flowers on the front, uh, Prima Butterfly that I ordered from Country Craft Creations. And I just got double ribbon that I placed so that it kind of looks like it's tying on the front of the dress. So this is a quad fold folio. So when you open this up, I did fussy cut on this one. I did not on the Ireland book. And I actually made him into a little pocket. And I've got just um, a piece of the paper tucked in there. You could put a picture on here really easily. Go this direction. So our first two panels, we have an insert here that I just punched the edge with a uh, Martha Stewart border punch and then matted on one side. And that just tucks in behind the pocket here. So this is an expanding pocket so you can put smaller like uh, Instax pictures or whatever in there. And I did add some of the Fern um, art glitter from Country Craft Creations as well. Our second panel, we just have some overlapping flaps. And again, I'm using the solid pack that Tammy has put together that goes with the papers. And you open it all the way up, and then you have that cute little guy in here with his basket. And these all just fold back in on themselves. And you can fold it with either side to the top. Doesn't matter. Okay. We go to our next panel. We have a waterfall. And this is a five and a half by six inch waterfall. And I did mat all of these completely <clears throat> all the way down to the base with another cute little bunny hiding in here. And then this just ties closed. And again, there is a ribbon pack that you can get to go with the country bunny paper. There is a ton of ribbon on it. And it actually, the ribbon that's for the country bunny actually also matches Forever Ireland. So I used... Um, some more of it on that album when I show you that one. So this just opens up. We've got just a nice pocket here, space for photos there. And then our last panel, I used this way cute, like fuzzy trim. I don't know what it is, but I absolutely love it. And I also used my envelope punch board to create these little flaps that kind of nest together. When you open that up, you've got space here for pictures, and then I've just got some stacked pockets with some small tags that I did use the border punch on. Okay, and that is the folio with Country Bunny. Let me close this one up. And let's look at Forever Ireland. So again, same layout, and what's fun with this one is really you can... Um, you can, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? You can change what you put on which panel. So you can customize this. If you didn't want to use the four different panel elements, you could do the entire thing with just the same elements on each panel. You could do two and two. You could change it up however you want to. It's going to be really easy to do that. Um, so for this ribbon, I've got some coming this way. I've got some coming the other way. And again, these little flowers here are the Prima flowers that um, Tammy picked out to go with the Country Bunny. 
They also, like I said, work really well Forever Ireland. And then I've got some other Prima flowers from my stash and then some little greenery from, um, I think, Hobby Lobby. So on this one, like I said, I didn't fussy cut. I just left the paper as is. This paper is gorgeous. I love, 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 love this paper. I can't even tell you. So again, like I said, same layout. This time I did not... Um, do a border punch on this insert, but you absolutely could if you wanted to. Um, we've got the little pocket with the magnetic closure again. This time I used a Prima Butterfly in here. Center section again is just those same um, paper flaps just overlapping. Um, again, I've got the matching solids that go with the collection. And I did that blue there so that it picks up the blue that's in the flowers and things here. So, and again, it all just folds in on itself. And ties shut. So on our next panel, we've got our waterfall again. This time I just matted that one inch at the bottom, actually half inch at the bottom of each one of those flaps so that I could keep that paper pretty much intact so that that pattern continues on down the front of the waterfall. I did add another one of those little Prima butterflies up there. And this again does open to the side and then it's got the pocket here. Okay. All right, so then my last one is that same nesting. I don't know why that doesn't want to stay over where it's supposed to. I actually screwed this up and sliced this off the wrong way. So uh, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> but again, I've got that blue butterfly on here to pick up that blue watercolor on the paper itself. And then again, I've got my tags in my little pockets. This time again, I did not ed edge punch these either. Um, I didn't think it really needed it. So there you go. There's the two albums, two different papers. I had intended for this one to fit inside my Forever Ireland easel box. And somewhere along the way, it's too thick <laughs> by like a not even a quarter of an inch, so it doesn't quite, it fits this way. The lid does not want to close, but that's okay. Had I left the embellishments off the front, it would have been fine. Wasn't thinking about that when I made it, but that's okay. So here are both of the books. Tutorial will play next, and I mentioned in the tutorial something about watching once it's finished to see the walkthrough of this one and instead I ended up deciding to re-record the walkthrough and, and walk through both of them at the same time um, just so that you can see how they turn out with the different papers so um, please ignore that when you hear that in the tutorial and there you go as always thanks for watching please hit like and subscribe and Hit the little bell if you want notifications when I upload new projects. Your tutorial starts now. Okay, so to start, you're going to need four pieces of chipboard, eight inches by eight inches. I have gone ahead and wrapped three of them already just to save us some time because it's the same process to wrap all four of them. And then to wrap them, you need four pieces of cardstock, 10 by 10. So I've got that in my scoreboard with my guides so that I have a one inch border all the way around. Let me just get the backing off of my score tape. And I'm just gonna use those guides and drop it down. Okay, and set that aside. I'm gonna switch out one of my one inch guides for my one and a half inch and then we can do our spine pieces. So let's start with the tiny ones. You need two pieces of chipboard, eight inches by three quarters of an inch, okay? To wrap those, you need cardstock that is 10 inches by three and three quarters of an inch. 
second, let me get my backing off of my score tape. And again, I'm just going to use my guide. Put that down. Put my next one in here. So again, the cardstock is 10 inches by 3 and 3 quarters. The chipboard is 8 inches by 3 quarters. Okay. Add those over there. Our last piece is eight inches by one and three quarters. To wrap that, you need a piece that is 10 inches by four and three quarters. So again, I'm gonna get my score tape backing off here. I'm trying to clean out all my scraps. I have so many like weird sized pieces of score tape, I can't even tell you. All right, we are done with our spacers. We can move our scoreboard for right now. Okay, so let's do this cover piece first. And keep in mind you're going to do this four times. It's gonna be the exact same every single time. So you're just gonna use that chipboard to fold over and then you're gonna crease where it folds, okay? So again, I'm just folding over and then burnishing down where that crease is. And this is the new Olive Artisan Cardstock from Country Craft Creations. I love it. It goes with so many things you wouldn't necessarily think of. But I just am, obs am totally obsessed with it. So, <coughs> excuse me. You're gonna have four squares, okay? All we're gonna do is cut right along that line, that fold line, and cut out that square. You're gonna do that on all four corners. Okay. After you've done that, you're gonna fold in. You can see here how there's like a little piece hanging over the edge. You're gonna put your scissors up against the side of your chipboard and then just angle it in a little bit and miter that corner. You're gonna do this on all the corners. Come here with the glue. I'm going to go along the edge of that chipboard, some on the middle, and I'm just going to push this up against the side of the chipboard with my bone folder, and then over and down. Just burnish that down. Okay, I'm going to go to the opposite side, do it again. Again. Okay. And one more. For our spines, we're going to do the same folding technique. And it's going to be a little tricky on these tiny ones. But literally, if you hold onto the chipboard and then fold, you'll be fine. Okay, 
gonna go ahead and fold all three. And then we'll finish prepping these. So again, I am just folding it around that chipboard. Again, you're going to have your square. Well, these are really more of a rectangle, but you see the point. We're going to cut that out just like we did before. And then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to fold in so that you're getting that little piece off and mitering that corner. And then you're going to do it again this way. So we're going to do the same thing on these other two pieces. there. This is why I pre-wrapped those other ones so you didn't have to watch me do this on three big pieces as well. <laughs> So on these, we're not going to fold these long sides in. We're just going to fold the ends, the little short ends. So I'm going to do the same thing we did before. there. Okay. Okay. 
All right, so once you've done that, you're gonna flip it over like this. Take your bone folder and you're just gonna work that paper down over the edge of that chipboard, okay? So you can see how this is now more defined than this side. That definition is what you're looking for, okay? We're gonna do that on all three pieces. All right, so I need to do that a little bit better on that one. Oops. All right, so now we're gonna take our cover, one of our cover pieces, and one of our small um, spine pieces. Okay. And what I'm going to do, actually, let me grab. You can do this with your scoreboard. You can do this just by eyeballing it. I'm going to take my ruler here. And this is my non slip one. I'm going to get that edge of that spine right there. I'm going to line up my cover on top of my spine. And I'm just going to pull it over until I feel it kind of drop off that edge. And then I'm going to push it down. Okay. I'm going to turn it this way. I'm going to get glue on this side now. We're going to do the same thing again. Start on that side. Come over till it drops off. And then down. Okay. So now we want our big piece. This is going to be a little bit trickier because this is a quad fold, so it's going to be a little bit longer than you normally would have. I'm going to go ahead and get my glue. I'm going to lift this up, slide it under, and then do that same thing again. cover piece and repeat. Okay, slide it over We're on our last little set here. Okay, so again, lift it up, slide it under, piece. Same method. And finish that down. Okay. So then you can turn it over. Take your bone folder again and burnish on those flaps, those little wings where you put everything down and just burnish those down. Make sure everything's good and stuck. And then I like to come along and burnish so that my bone folder is halfway between that spine, so this chipboard and the cardstock, and just push that down into that groove. So I've got cardstock or chipboard that's like trying to flake on me here. Weird. Okay. Okay. So then I'm going to come back along and do that on all three of my spine pieces. Okay. Then you're going to need three pieces, and this one's a little bit longer, and that's okay. Three inches by seven and seven eighths. What these are going to do 
Actually, maybe that one is supposed to be bigger. I actually think this one's supposed to be four inches, not three inches. So this one's actually a little bit short, but that's okay. Those are going to go down over those spines to reinforce them. You do want score tape for this, not glue, because you want this to stick and stick good and stick fast. If you use glue, there's going to be drying time involved and it may end up bubbling up, which you do not want. So I've got my three inch by seven and seven eighths. And I'm just going to line it up almost to the bottom, center it over that spine, and just push it down. Okay, I'm going to do my next one. Actually, I know why I cut some of that off, because I want to cut into a new sheet of uh, score tape. <laughs> so, there we go. Okay. And then our last one. Okay. So after you have those down, I'm just going to come back one more time with my bone folder and burnish those down. Then I'm going to fold this up. I'm going to take the not sharp end and I'm just going to work that crease as I fold that up. Okay. I'm going to go to the next hinge point and do the same thing again. Okay. Come to the other side here. Get that started. And then I will come in the center and get my last one. Okay, so now your book should fold up like so. I may have done something really weird because my other one it sat in there just perfectly. I think I got one of these too far over. Uh -huh. That's okay. It's all right. We will make it work. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. This cover is over just a tad further than it should have been. Dang it. That's okay. We are just going to go with the as is. It will be just fine. Okay. So. For the insides, there are four panels, as you can clearly see. Um, the elements that go on each of them, you can mix and match. You can put them wherever you want to. If you have one of them that you like better, that you want to repeat on another panel, that's great. Because um, the rest of this goes together really, really quickly. So, let's start with... Our first panel. Our first panel you need one piece of cardstock nine and a half by eleven inches. Okay, with the eleven inches at the top of your scoreboard, and I've lost my scoring tool somewhere, so I'm gonna have to use this one even though it's not my favorite. <clears throat> okay, eleven inches at the top of your scoreboard, you're gonna score it half an inch, one inch, one and a half inch. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to turn all the way around. And again, half inch, one inch, one and a half inch. Okay. You're then going to turn it to the nine and a half inch side. On the nine and a half inch side, you're going to score it three inches, three and one eighth. So that's the first little 
line past three inches. I wonder what I did with my other one. It's gonna drive me nuts. And I don't see, ah, oh, there it is, okay. This one, I, I mean, it scores really nicely, but I just feel like it's slipping out of my hand the whole time. <laughs> and that's probably just me. Okay, so three inches, three and one eighth. We're gonna go over here to six and five eighths. So that's the first line past six and a half. So six and five eighths. And then six and seven eighths. Okay. So. What you're going to do, you have your little eighth inch gusset, you have your quarter inch gusset. You're going to come down here on that first score line, so on the three inch score line, and you're going to cut in to the, the one and a half inch score line, okay? You're going to turn, you're going to start up here at the top. Well, the bottom from the way I'm holding it, I guess. And you're going to cut out that section. Okay. I'm going to come to the other side. We're going to cut on that three inch score line in to the one and a half. Turn it back over. And we're going to start down here. And we're going to cut all the way. Up and again remove those pieces. Okay. Once you have done that, you can fold, accordion fold, these little side pieces in and burnish those down. Okay. So then I'm going to fold up, get my eighth inch score line. Eighth inch score lines, when you have that little eighth inch between, a little bit harder. I find it's easiest to fold one and then kind of push back towards the other one. And then you'll get your little gusset piece there. down so I'm just gonna get glue maybe <laughs> maybe not because I forgot to put the cap on for a few minutes there I'm gonna go ahead and get glue on my tabs there I'm gonna push those down and in make sure they're lined up and then burnish those down as well Okay, so there's the base of our pocket. We're just gonna go ahead and fold our remaining two score lines. You're gonna have a quarter inch gusset at the top of the pocket, as opposed to the eight inch gusset, I'm sorry, eight inch, eighth of an inch gusset at the bottom. Okay, so this one, this time, so in my Country Bunny book, I put it on this first panel all the way out here to the edge. You could put it at the bottom, but I liked it out to the edge. But what I did, rather than glue over the entire thing, I just glued along three sides just to have another very shallow pocket to tuck a bigger photo mat or something into. So I'm going edge out to the edge. It's going to be even top and bottom. And open that up, get my bone folder, and then I can burnish down inside. Okay, 
I did use a magnet on this. As soon as I figure out where I put them. They were just sitting over here. There we go. So I'm going to use a magnet on this. You could do a ribbon closure if you wanted to, of course. You could even do like a small tuck spot and tuck a cut apart or something, depending on which paper collection you're using. Um, the Forever Ireland does not have cut aparts. So that's why I'm going to do a magnet here. Maybe. Okay. So I'm gonna put that about there. Press that down, and there's our magnet. All right. Grab the scoreboard again. Panel number two. Since my stuff is stacked backwards. So you're gonna have eight flaps total. Four flaps are going to be six by six. Four flaps are going to be four by six. All of these are going to be scored at half an inch. So with your six by six, obviously it doesn't matter which side you score on because they're six by six. But you're gonna score all of these at half an inch on one side. For the four by six, You want the six inch at the top of your scoreboard, and then you're going to score it half an inch. Okay. So I put these in the book. Fold and burnish all of my six inch, six by six flaps first, which of course once you fold, then they're six by five and a half, but you see my, you, you follow what I'm doing. Okay. So I did a ribbon closure. So you will want to put your ribbon down before you do your flaps to the sides, okay? I'm not sure which ribbon I'm using. Actually, I actually think I'm gonna use the brown. Let's go ahead and just use this one, that'll work. And all I do for that is I just take a small piece of score tape and I put it about halfway And then I'm going to add my score tape. It apparently has tied itself into a knot because of course it has. <laughs> I'm just going to kind of eyeball what I think I need in order to tie it. And if it's a little bit long, it's better than it being too short because you can always cut some off. You can't add extra. Trust me. <laughs> I have ruined more projects by not leaving the ribbon long enough than I can even tell you. All right, so we're gonna put our other piece down here and then we can glue our flaps down. Okay, so I am just centering these on the panel you will want to look down at the chipboard, not at where our little wing pieces come in because those may not be dead center. They may not be the same size on both ends, both sides. I know what I'm trying to say. And I do opposing sides so that I can line these up exactly. Okay. And then I'll do the other sides. That one's going the other direction. Okay. 
And again, I'm just centering this up, making sure that I'm not on my hinge. We're good. Okay. Again, I'm going to use that one to line it up, make sure that they're even. All right, so let's get our other four folded and burnished. Okay, so what I did with these is I just put these, just centered them up in here so that they all folded in together. You could attach them to the flap itself, but I don't think I want to do that. Because, well, maybe I do. Actually, that would be kind of neat. Okay, so if you want to, well, no. No, I don't want to do that. I take it back. That's just going to overcomplicate the matting, and I don't want to do that. Okay, so all I'm doing is just centering this here again, making sure that I'm not in the way of this folding over, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm using the flap that's already down to ensure that I'm lining them up exactly across from each other. I'm going to throw my flap on the floor. Okay. And again, I'm just using that one as my guide to line this up so that they overlay on top of each other evenly. And there you go. All right, let's move on to our next one. So, panel three, we've got a pocket, a flap, and a waterfall. So, the pocket is gonna be six by nine. Starting with the nine inch across the top of the scoreboard, you're gonna score it half an inch. Turn, half an inch, turn, and half an inch. So you have a half inch score on two short sides, and one long side. The flap is going to be six and a half by eight with the six and a half at the top of the scoreboard. And I just realized my silly autofocus came back on and I don't know why. So if this has been going in and out this whole time, I apologize. I wasn't watching my screen and I didn't notice it until just now. Um, okay, so eight by six and a half, six and a half at the top of the scoreboard. I score this at half an inch. And then your waterfall is again going to be six by six. So you're going to, there's five pieces. You're going to score all of these at half an inch. So let's start with our flap and our waterfall. So I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish. I'm 
I'm actually going to grab my scoreboard. And we're going to build the waterfall on here so that we get it perfectly lined up. So I've got my score for my my tab that's going to we're going to fold in facing out so that we're building this it's going to look like from the bottom but it's not really and we're using the side of the scoreboard as our guide to make sure that this is lined up exactly and thank you Bonnie for that tip why I never thought of this prior to that prior to this I have no clue because it's so brilliant I don't know why I never thought of doing that because Lord knows I have made enough slightly off waterfalls <laughs> over the years. Ugh, it's okay though. Okay. Oh, this is going together so fast. I love it. Oh my gosh, how did I not? Wow. All right. So there's our waterfall. I'm going to then come in here and I'm just going to burnish those score lines down one more time. Do believe that is the most even waterfall I have ever done. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I'm gonna fold my tab in, burnish that down, grab the book. I am gonna miter these corners ever so slightly. And then I am going to glue this down. So, oh my gosh, I could not get glue everywhere. That would help. But I took my little metal tip off of my glue because, quite honestly, I am tired of fighting with it. And that seems like doesn't matter how well I clean it, that's all I do. All right, so when you put this down, you want to go just a little bit away from that hinge point. Okay. If it's helpful, hold your book up just to make sure you're not going too far over. And then there you go. So this is going to open out this way. Okay. Um, on my other one, I did actually put ribbon to hold this closed, but I attached it on the back here. Why is that not gluing? Okay, well, we're going to do this again because apparently I didn't get enough glue or something. So we're going to try this one more time. Let's do this this time. There we go, that should be better. I'm gonna let that sit for a second before I mess with it again. So your pocket, you're gonna miter your top corners. Okay. This bottom where you have the score lines that cross, you're just gonna cut right through the middle of that score line. Okay. Then we are gonna fold and burnish. And if you cut right through the center of where those score lines cross, you're gonna have this nice, neat little corner that's not bulky when you put it down in your project. Okay. That's much better. All right, so let's get some glue on here. And 
this up top to bottom. And again, make sure you're not getting into that hinge point. We're just gonna burnish it down. And there you go. This is the other place that I used a magnet. See where that sits. Put it about right there. All right. Not going to do the ribbon on that until I go to mat. But again, with the ribbon for the waterfall, all I did is attach it on the back side here so that it wraps around. Because once you've matted it back here, you're good. All right. Last panel. So this one, we've got some pockets with some tags. For the pockets, you need six pieces, four and three quarters by three inches. And then we've got some panels that we're going to do something kind of fun with. First one is six and one eighth by eight. The other is three and three quarters by eight. We're going to come back to these. Let's do our pockets first. So with the four and three quarters at the top, you're going to score a half an inch, turn it all the way around, and half an inch again. Half an inch, half an inch. Half an inch, turn, half an inch, half an inch, half an inch. set those aside. For the first flap, three and three quarters by eight, three and three quarters at the top, we're going to score this at half an inch. Six and one eighth by eight, six and one eighth at the top, and score it at half an inch. Okay, now we are going to, where'd my thing go? Get out the We Are Memory Keepers punch board and a craft knife. What we want is we're going to punch both of these, but one of them is going to have the tab that comes out, one of them is going to have the little piece that goes in. Okay? Decide which side you're going to do. I'm going to have my little end piece on the smaller flap. So we're going to line this up at the two inch mark on the envelope punch board and punch. Turn it over, line it up at the two inch mark again, and punch. Okay. I'm going to lay this on my board. I'm going to get a ruler or a straight edge of some kind. I'm going to line it up. And we're going to pull that little strip off. Okay. So there's one. For our other one, we're going to go at one and a half and punch. Turn it over one and a half again and punch. And this time, instead of cutting out the middle, we're going to cut off the outside edges. I'm just lining up. So what happens is those fit together like that. So when we put them in our book, and this is another one where we do need to put the ribbon down before we actually glue these in. And actually, I need to mat in here as well, so I'm going to have to grab a piece of paper. 
For this one, I'm going to use this kind of grayish white seam binding again. We're just going to take a little piece of tape. You can get like all exact and measure exactly where your center is to put your tape. I'm just going to eyeball it because it's fine. Okay, so again, whoops. Actually, did I do this right? Hold on. I know, we're supposed to have a guess it in there. I gotta score that one more time. <laughs> I knew something didn't look right. I couldn't figure out what it was. Okay. So let's go ahead and get this down. All right, let me grab the scoreboard because we do need to make one more score on both of these pieces. I apologize. So you've got your half inch, then you need to go at three quarters of an inch. So we have a three quarters of an inch gusset on this, which honestly, I don't know that we needed, but it's there, so it's okay. So, fold that over. Huh? I'm close. You want to sit in the chair and wait? Yeah, I'm not sitting there. Huh? Yeah, I'm not sitting there. I'm going. Okay. All right, so we're going to put this one down right up here to the edge. Are you posting this one? Okay. And then I'm just going to double check that this is right before I put this down because I know I had to change a measurement when I made the original. I believe we're good. Yes. Okay. Oh, probably should have mitered that corner, but that's okay. It will be just fine. Okay. We're going to come out here to this outside edge. Again, you're going to make sure you're lined up. Push that down. Push back and get our gusset back. And there you go. So this is going to sit where they meet just like so. All right, so let me grab my trimmer. And I need two dots. My paper. Hold on one second. Ugh. All right. Let's figure out which one I'm putting underneath there. Let's do that one. All right. So let's do this two. I meant to cut this beforehand. I forgot. It's going to be seven and seven eighths. Whoops, let's not slide the paper around. That's not okay. Are you done? I'm almost done. Just chill. All right. So this is going to go down in here. Really, we could have just found a solid one to put down in here, but it's okay. We'll go ahead and do this one. I think I'm just going to try to do it that way. Get some glue. All right, so for our pockets, you can go ahead and fold and burnish all of these because what we're going to do is we're going to stack these. 
Okay. And the way we're going to stack these, I want about one inch in between. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take three of these. I'm going to line them up on my thing here. And, okay, I need about an inch. I'm just using the measurements on my mat. Oops, this is my new mat and it is fabulous. It has dry erase. It actually is magnetic. It's just amazing. Okay. So then we're gonna do the same thing on the next one. I'll line this up here. We're going to go one inch. Oops. Okay, so there is our pocket structure. What is today, Wednesday? Oh, tomorrow is Thursday. Okay. I was like, why is he still up? It's like nine o'clock. But tomorrow's his last day before spring break, so there you go. All right, so we're going to do that again. I'm lining this up on my mat, I'm going about one inch, and then I am gluing my next pocket to those top flaps, okay? And then again, one inch, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put glue on all these tabs and then you're just going to do a very thin line across the bottom of each of those pockets. Before I do that, I'm going to kind of set these in here, figure out about where they need to go so I can space them evenly, so I have an idea of where they're going to end up. Okay, Those are my sides. And down we go. Okay, there we go. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. There we go. There's our pockets. The tags that go in the pockets are three and a quarter by three and three quarters. There are six of them. You can do a decorative edge punch if you want to, but they're just going to go in all of those. I'll do that after I decorate all of them or after I finish decorating the book. So at this point, all you got left to do is mat and decorate to your little heart's content. If you stick around, the walkthrough of this decorated with the Forever Ireland paper will be next. We'll be coming up right in just here in a second. I still don't believe I did that on that cover. Oh, that makes me mad. Oh well. 
it's fine. Nobody will know but me and anybody who watches this tutorial. <laughs> um, and then as far as closure, I had just done ribbon that I attached to the back and left it loose on the side so it just pulls up and over and ties. It's up to you if you want to do something different. Um, but there you go. There's your project. Thank <laughs> you.